What's the most productive vegetable you can grow in the space you have? Pole beans or climbing beans, of course. These guys encapsulate the glory and abundance of summer, so long as you follow my seven steps to earn that success. So let's get on and grow perfect climbing beans every time. More than any other vegetable, climbing beans are known by so many other names. There's pole beans, vining, climbing beans, there's string beans, snap beans, runner beans. But whatever you call them though, they really love a sunny position. So give them somewhere that gets at least five hours of direct sunshine and preferably even eight. They also love a really rich and fertile soil and one that holds on to moisture, but that is free draining too, so the roots aren't sat in water. The best way to encourage perfect soil conditions is of course to go in with some lovely rich organic matter, such as garden compost. I lay about a couple of inches or five centimeters of compost over the surface, ready for planting a couple of weeks beforehand. If you're gardening in a particularly hot or dry climate, then one option is to prepare what are called compost trenches or pits the winter before planting. Now it's not winter now, but I'm just gonna demonstrate. You're simply digging out a trench where the beans will go, and then we're going to fill the bottom with anything that's compostable. So in this case, some kitchen scraps, and then simply return the soil back over the top. Now what this will do is, as the kitchen scraps rot down, it'll create a layer of really moist and fertile goodness there that the beans will grow down into and those roots will find all that goodness and moisture and it'll help them to really thrive. Green beans need warmth to germinate. If you sow too early and it is tempting to do so, then the seeds can kind of sulk and languish and they may even rot or you may get weak seedlings that will put your bean fueled ambitions on the back foot. So it pays to wait till the soil is warm enough. If you're in a warmer climate, then sow direct into the soil because it does away with the need to uh, transplant the seedlings. Now, it's best to wait till the soil is about 45 Fahrenheit or seven degrees Celsius or warmer ideally. And then to sow, it's simply a question of making a hole next to each support and then simply dropping in a couple of seeds per hole and then covering them over with more soil to a depth of around one inch or a couple of centimeters. Now, if you get a couple of seedlings germinate, then you can either let them both grow, but I think it might be a bit crowded in this instance. So I would thin the seedlings to leave the strongest at each cane. If you are in a uh, slightly cooler or more temperate climate like mine, actually, then it pays to sow beans uh, maybe under some form of protection into plug trays or, or pots. It just gives slightly more reliable germination. So fill your plug trays with a potting mix. This one's peat free. And then it's very simple, just one bean per plug to a depth of about an inch or a couple of centimeters deep. Nice and simple. The beans are quite quick to germinate once it's warmed up. So they can go from sowing to planting within about three weeks. And you want to plant them after your last frost date. So this is one reason it's best to wait till the second half of spring to sow them. So they're not waiting to go outside when it's still quite chilly. It's no surprise that to grow good climbing beans, you'll need proper supports, at least six to seven feet or two meters tall from the ground right up to the top. Now you could use A-frame supports, uh, but something like this teepee here is ideal for more exposed gardens because it's better at deflecting the wind rather than a long row of beans, which acts kind of like a sail and can catch the wind. I'm really lucky to have these rather glorious decorative arches here. They look absolutely magnificent once they're cloaked with the beans' lush foliage and even more glorious once the beans are in flower and the beans are dangling down from overhead here. These are some beans here that I sowed earlier and they're now ready to plant. I prepared the soil here with plenty of compost and I'm pleased to say this is one of the sunnier spots in the garden so they really like it here. 
climbing beans produce tendrils that really help them to cling on to any support they come into contact with. These are really programmed to climb, so they'll find their own way onto these supports. But if you do find that the seedlings are lurching too far away, then you can always just feed them in and help them find their feet and get onto those supports. Quick tip for you, once the vines reach the top of their supports, or in the case of this arch here, meet in the middle, it's time to pinch out, which just means like nipping off the growing point of the vines to stop them growing any taller. This does two things. It stops everything from getting a real sort of rumble and jumble up there and getting overcrowded. And it helps the plants concentrate on flower and of course pod production, which is what we're after. Now for other bean support options, please do check out our video on that, which includes a really rather glorious tea frame support as well. I'll pop a link to it in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and ding the notification bell so you can be kept up to speed with all our future videos. We've given these guys a thorough soaking to settle them in. Now watering is really, really important with climbing beans because they grow so tall, of course, and have all those pods to produce, and that takes a lot of moisture. It's really hard to overwater beans, especially if you've got well-drained soil. So don't err on the side of caution with that water. Now, most plants grow to, say, a foot or so tall. These will be growing well over head height, so you can see the need for water there. In the summer, I water at least once a week and twice a week in the hottest uh, spells of the summer. Give them a really good thorough watering at the base, aiming right at the base to the soil where the roots are, of course. Go off and water somewhere else and then come back and give them another soaking to really drive that moisture home. If in doubt, do the old finger test, stick your finger in about an inch or so deep and feel how moist it is. If it's dry in any way, then get on a water quick. All beans are legumes, which is a family of plants that works with bacteria to fix nitrogen at the roots in a kind of I'll help you if you help me relationship. This makes beans a lot less reliant on us for nutrients. That said, they still will appreciate that rich, fertile soil and the compost that's been added at planting time. Not only does this give plants an extra oomph, it also improves the water holding capacity of the soil, which is so important. If you do find plants going a bit yellow and anemic later on in the season, then just be on hand to step in with a liquid tomato or vegetable feed to give the plants a little extra nutritional boost and to help them along. Bean flowers will do a lot to attract pollinating insects in from far and wide, and they will even attract hummingbirds into the garden if you are lucky enough to have them where you are. Nevertheless, it pays to always include lots of nectar-rich flowers as well, just among your vegetables and beans more generally. My personal favourites are sweet alyssum, which is what I'm planting here, as well as calendula, marigolds and nasturtiums. Other pollinator winners include Cosmos and Zinnia too. Just allow a few pockets around the vegetable garden to include these flowers. It's definitely worthwhile making some space for flowers because they will improve pollination for all of your fruiting and podding plants. If you notice in the chimney up there, you can see lots of bees coming in and out of it. We've had a bee's nest in the chimney for about five years now, and while that is far from ideal, it has to be said, it has at least had a silver lining in unrivaled pollination down here in the vegetable garden. So if you can offer nesting sites for bees, that's great, but maybe not in the chimney, and of course food in the form of those nectar-rich flowers. In my garden, there are two pests to watch out for, at least when it comes to beans. The first one is slugs, which can nibble at young plants. This is one reason why you might consider starting them off in pots to plant out once they're a bit bigger and more resilient. Watch out early on, once you've planted your beans and pick off any slugs you find, or consider setting up slug traps filled with beer to trap them early on. The other major pest is black bean aphid or black fly. These tiny flies tend to congregate on fresh new growth at the tips of shoots. 
Now, inspect plants every few days, and if you do find an early infestation, act on it quickly. I find sometimes just blasting them off with a jet of water really does the trick. And then as the season progresses and you get those nectar-rich flowers coming into bloom, you'll find that natural predators will take over. Things like hoverflies or ladybugs or ladybirds, they'll get on and eat the aphids and bring the populations of pests under control without you having to resort to pesticides. And then the only other thing to do is to nip off any dead or dying leaves as you come across them. This avoids any problems spreading, improves airflow around the vines, and of course keeps things looking neat and tidy. You know what's coming next. Pick your beans and pick them often. If you pick your beans while they're still young and tender, the plants will be encouraged to produce yet more beans. Why? Because they haven't had a chance to produce mature and viable seeds yet, because you're picking them still quite young. However, let them get too long, lumpy and mature, and the plants will really slow down, or they may even stop producing altogether. So check plants regularly, every nook, cranny and underside. Be really thorough. On these arches here, I take a very methodical approach, picking the beans on the inside and outside of each wall and only then reaching up and grabbing the danglers, so none are missed whatsoever. One little tip, in fact, is to grow yellow or purple potted varieties because the pods will then stand out a bit clearer against the green foliage, so there's no risk of missing any. This year I'm growing two types of beans, some beautiful Borlotti beans and some runner beans. That way I get a variety of beans and of course as a bit of an insurance policy should one of them slow or fail because of the weather. I would love to know what you're growing so do drop me a comment below to tell me. And if you'd like more Beanie Bliss then be sure to check out this playlist which includes my simple steps for setting up a bean teepee. I'll catch you next time.